EU4 is a game with a lot of political options for governing your country. Ranging from monarchs wielding absolute power, to theocracies wielding absolute power in the name of God, to republics where powerful politicians manipulate the electorate to wield absolute power. True democracies, where you look at the will of the people, maintain high levels of political and social freedoms, emancipate the poor and downtrodden of society, exist in the same realm as polite Parisians. In theory they exist, but they are yet to be confirmed in practice. Even revolutionary governments that bring down the oppressive monarchies that they rose up against end up becoming revolutionary zeal executing authoritarians anyway. So what would a country need to be to be considered a true democracy in EU4? Well, for starters, it needs to use the Republican tradition mechanic and have their elections as frequently as possible so that their people can make their voices heard. It also needs to have enough Republican tradition to basically maintain itself at 100 Republican tradition permanently, even if constantly re-electing the same person, to prevent the country ever slipping away from democracy. Furthermore, as an optional side quest, government types such as the Swiss cantons, which promise a direct democracy type of government, are preferable to republics such as noble elites or plutocracies, where it's heavily implied that only the rich or powerful or both get to vote. Not very democratic, so those government types need to be avoided. So, disclaimers, the above conditions were actually not that difficult to meet, and since we don't need to be doing anything silly like get plus 5 yearly republican tradition, we can instead focus on the playability of the country in question. There will be two paths open today, both starting from the same point, one which will be really doable but has an interesting start, and another one which is significantly easier, but I would argue that its main difficulty is that it just gets boring. Otherwise, standard setup, so no custom nations, Iron Man compatible, achievement compatible. Let's go. So today, for the first time in a while, we're not going to have a counter. So the nice thing about stacking Republican tradition to get enough for re-election is you can kind of just look at your Republican tradition at the uh, at the top of your screen and see it there live, live updating counter inside the game. Not much point having a counter of something I can just ho hover over inside the game for. But just because I'm taking a break from the counters doesn't mean that you should have to. So feel free to increase both the like as well as the sub counter if you haven't already. But with the self shooting out the way, let's get into the video. So. I have to make one kind of a uh, point here. We're not using custom nations, but if we were, it would get ridiculous. See, we're going to be able to stack length of election term to minus two, meaning that our elections will go from occurring every four years to every two years. This is already quite powerful. This means that it will take us, on average, 10 years to go from a 114 to a full 666. Really strong. But of course, you could technically do better. You can get there in just five years if you had a re-election every year. Unfortunately, only three mechanics in the game give you minus one year of your election. So the answer would be run all three, right? No. One of those mechanics is an alternative reform at the same tier as another one we'll be using for minus one re-election. So what you end up happening is I can't run two reforms from the same tier uh, without exploits, to be clear. You, you can run multiple reforms from the same tier, but I'm not going to get into how. But if it's something that you want to explore re-elections every year, then that can be achieved, we just need to go and press the forbidden button, the custom nation one. See, if we head over to Athens, the birthplace of democracy, we can go to our government unique ideas. See, for just 30 points and a strategy that I'm going to go into, if you have the length of election term minus one, you'll be able to re-elect yearly, which means every year you'll have a button press that will give you 50 of each mana, as well as re-electing your 666. This is ridiculously strong. It means also that if he does die as a general, or just dies of old age, you'll be able to get a new one in just five years from the, from the 114 or whatever you end up picking. And honestly, costing you 30 points is disingenuous as how powerful it is. If you are going to be doing this, I would also recommend picking up 0.3 yearly Republican tradition or even 0.125. That's going to cost you. But what isn't going to cost you is minus 30% re-election cost, which is quite, you know, strong. It saves you a lot of Republican tradition, which is ironic as the Localization there implies you'll seize in the Senate, which sounds not very democratic. But yeah, no, minus 30% re-election cost here is incredibly powerful and it's good to save you a lot of Republican tradition from so many of these frequent elections. I'd also recommend picking up an extra 40% average monarch lifespan to make your 666s last even longer. Even though I will be clear, we're going to be getting even more average monarch lifespan within our run. But we don't need custom nations to still be completely broken and overpowered, because today we're heading over to the most Italian places in all of Italy, Bologna. The place named after Pasta. See, Bologna's gonna have some useful things for us. 
and is a necessary part of the start. The reason we're in Bologna is we need to get the faster idea set. Namely, the Pentivigolio family. Apart from being making us very legitimate or a good horde or very meritocratic, um, so yeah, if you're going to go form China, this is going to be really strong. Plus one yelling meritocracy is amazing. But in practice, it's going to give us 0.3 yelling Republican tradition, which is quite good. But also, it's going to give us the only source of re-election cost inside the idea groups of our countries. Minus 20% from this idea here. The problem, of course, is our form of democracy is absolutely awful. It's allowing royal marriages, it has not that much democracy, basically, and with 12-year term duration, the honest answer, any length of term modifiers or stacking are going to be quite useless. Basically, we need to get rid of the Italian signora as much as possible. And there are two ways of approaching this problem. And this is where our paths diverge, because one of them is honestly not even that hard, that much harder. We're going to have to pick up a different primary culture and change to it. The other one is much easier, but it does mean that your game is going to be very boring. The boring option is to improve your opinion with Austria to 106. Uh, not a very difficult thing to do, just shove a diplomat in there. If it's not happening fast enough, you can go to the estates, go to the clergy and give them the... Uh, I believe it's not religious delegation, but religious diplomats, there you go. And you get another plus 10 opinion there. Basically, you get, get 106 opinion with Austria. Given that they start at 25, not going to be an issue, or 40 if you use the if 35 you use the state privilege. Once you've done that, you can join the HRE, and then you just have to sit there looking pretty. What I mean in that regard is that you want to stay on one province and wait until one of the um, free cities, your Hamburgs, your uh, Bregnes, one of these will eventually fall. And you just have to pray at that point that Austria is going to go to you and make you a free city. This will knock you out of Italian Signora and give you the Free City Government, which is going to have a term duration of 4. It's also going to come with some pretty hefty dev cost reductions, but eh. Mostly the reason you'll be doing this is to get a term duration of 4. This does not require much skill. It means you have to sit there, not look invadable, so grab some allies, and get Austria to make you a Free City. You don't need to expand past that. Everything else we're going to be achieving here is going to be done through government reforms and ideas from the Innate Republic. And the fact that we are Bologna, so there, that's that. And the Bolognese ideas, if you do want to keep them, um, well, you do want to keep you want to keep the re-election cost here, are really not that bad in the grand scheme of things. You have construction costs, you have development costs, you have goods produced, and you have tech costs. Nothing to complain about, to even have some morale for the current morale patch. But I'm going to be showing a more fun route that I would recommend that does not involve being a free city. Because we need to begin by heading over to Switzerland where you'll be able to accept the Swiss and then become Swiss primary culture. This is going to knock you out of Italian Signora, but it's going to enable something rather interesting. It's going to enable the autonomous Swiss cantons reform. Now, historically and even today, the Swiss cantons is basically a federation of independent cantons that meet and vote on things. Very democratic for our notion of being a democratic government. What's also great with it is that it has an election every four years. This is going to reduce our length of election term down rather substantially. If we take a look at our current ruler, we have an election in 1448. So far, so good. Now, the thing to bear in mind is this government is quite unique, namely that you don't need to remain Swiss to keep this government. Like, you can go ahead and form Sardinia Piedmont, you can go ahead and uh, form Tuscany, you can go ahead and do whatever you want, you can go ahead and form France for all it cares. It does not care about you staying Swiss. If you form another tag, you get to keep it. Let me demonstrate. So here I've become Piedmontese. Let's take a month stick with our government reforms. Is it going to go away? I gave myself Tech 32 to demonstrate the ideas later, so of course going to get a couple of those events. But no, of over the month stick, we've kept the autonomous Swiss cantons. Maybe if we form Sardinia Piedmont, they're going to go away. Let's not take new traditions and ambitions. Uh, we have the new uh, Sardinia Piedmont missions, so... Our house of the north, here's five admin efficiency and goods produced. But in terms of government reforms, we're still the autonomous Swiss cantons. And even with our month tick, we're the autonomous Swiss cantons. The only requirements for the autonomous Swiss cantons is to, well, be Swiss when you take it. That's it. You get to keep them, which is great. Because they also come with a free policy, which is quite powerful. Now, let's talk reforms. Republicanism will give us the early Republican tradition. But because all you know the routing, I'm going to tell you a little secret. 
we're gonna have enough here in Republican tradition to have constant re-elections. So for the roleplay of being the true democratic, super equal, equal state of all opportunities, pick up meritocratic rule. Apart from meritocracy already being a big democracy thing, it gives you the ability to recruit female generals. Fun fact, we're gonna gain that ability twice. And it also gives us 25 female advisor chance. The way female advisor chance works is that it basically gives you a chance of rolling a female advisor. Because the base amount is, I believe, around uh, 1 or 2%, we're going to get 25% female advisor here, and we're going to get another 25% female advisor later. We're actually going to end up, on average, with, I think, 1 or 2% more women uh, with our advisors than men. And we're going to be able to recruit female generals so well, we'll be able to recruit them twice. Unfortunately, they don't actually come to work for you twice. You just have the ability to recruit them triggered, yes, twice. Yeah, very disappointing. It also comes with 5 good so you can't complain too much. But of course the tier 3, and this is where the build starts to really shine, we have to take frequent elections. Now at tier 4 this is really up to you, you can curtail clerical powers if you want to keep the clergy in check as it were, but eh, it doesn't really matter here, I mean the clergy deserves the right to vote too after all. So I guess the argument can be made for maintaining the balance of power, but I mean honestly if you want to go give them some temple rights or something, you can also phrase that as making them democratic and making them happy. Now, tier 6, it gets interesting. I would actually recommend getting the Attorney General, as it's going to give you a lot of Republican tradition from your advisors. And you're going to be getting a lot of very cheap advisors with this build. I'll show you how later. And I understand, however, if you'd think something like Parliament is more democratic, though. Honestly, both are fine. And the best part is, again, with this build, you're not going to need the Republican tradition from your um, advisors. You're going to get enough from your policies and ideas. I'm going to take it anyway, because I think it's cool. But that's just me. Tier 7 regionalism... Uh, who cares? You can make a union of states, you can make an administrative division, it's not really a democracy question. Same for the economic matters. Um, you can curtail the Bergs if they think they're too influential, you can embrace economic theory, you can even do the lock-in proviso, but up to you. I mean, you're going to have economic ideas as part of this build, so the lock-in proviso is going to be available. I'm just doing the reforms now, so it's not available for me. I'm going to embrace free trade because I love uh, free trade and 100 points every time you embrace an institution. Sounds pretty good to me. And here to tier 9, we get to the fun part. We're going to be sacrificing an extra 20 maximum absolutism for minus 1 length of election term. And if you take a look now at our election term, we elect every 2 years. And these re-elections will cost us 5 Republican tradition. This means that, for now, we need to hit 2.5 year Republican tradition to be able to maintain constant elections. But, for the true democracy experience, and just to push this bill to the absolute stupidity for what you're going to be able to achieve on the side later, you want to extend suffrage for a diplomatic free policy. You can probably see where this is going, because at tier 13, we are going to reinforce our republican values and decrease the re-election cost by 10%, as well as getting an administrative free policy. Which means that now in the policy department, we're able to run three free admin policies, three free dip policies, and two free mill policies. As we get a free admin and dip policy, and we get a free mill, dip, and admin from our government reform, Swiss cantons. So we're going to have 332 policies filled out here. Isn't that ridiculous? Well, it's going to get better. Let's take a look at our ideas. Now, I'm going to do this in order that you should probably take it if you are doing this in game yourself. Um, you can open Plutocratic if you want to get the buffs from it earlier, but I mean the 10% National Morale of Armies is about the only military buff you're going to be getting from Plutocracy. I'd instead then recommend Diplomatic, as this would make your expansion a lot easier. You get a lot more diplomatic to improve relations than anyone who can join a coalition against you. And the promise of war score cost is never a bad thing. So with that said, go ahead and grab Diplomatic, followed by Plutocratic, followed by Economic, followed by Court. Now, Court is technically optional, as is my next recommendation. And the next recommendation, if you are going to go for it, I'd actually suggest taking it first. And that recommendation is going to be innovative. Why? Well... Court is only there for 0.2 year Republican tradition, but it's not necessary. We're already getting 0.3 from our Bolognese ideas. We can then get the Policy Mandatory Service, a diplomatic policy giving you 10 National Manpower Modifier, as well as more female advisor chance and may recruit female generals, which is, again, a great way of getting 52% uh, to 51% female advisor chance. But most crucially, it's going to give us minus 10% re-election cost. Then pick up formalized scales, weights, and measures for 10 tax, but more importantly, 0.2 yearly public tradition. And funnily enough, without any advisors, which again we're going to be getting scaling buffs for, without anything else, we've hit the 1.5 we'd need. The 0.3 you get from our ideas, and the formalized scales, weights, and measurements for 0.2, or any other source of 0.2, 
like for example full court which is technically redundant but i just want to mention it as a pretty easy source of it it's going to be enough republican tradition because we have minus 40% re-election costs. So every two years we need to spend three Republican tradition. Or if we make 1.5 Republican tradition, we're going to be able to re-elect forever. Now, another thing to bear in mind with these re-elections that happen every two years is that these re-elections are going to give us 50 of one of the types of mana. And given they're happening every year, that means we're getting 25 mana a year extra. That means that in essence, you're running slightly better than two extra free advisors that stack independently of everything else. Granted, the monarch points are random, but over the course of the game, they're going to average out as well. It's incredibly powerful. And that's really an understatement. But what's really funny about this build is, of course, the fact of going innovativeness. It's going to stack really well with us because we're going to be able to take 25% average monarch lifespan to keep our rulers a lot longer alive. Not really necessary, but it means that you'll be able to cycle the same re-elections a lot more, getting a lot more of those monarch points. Furthermore, I'd recommend handing over to Turkey and getting the mausoleum because it's going to give us an extra 10 average monarch lifespan. Another thing that you should consider picking up is going to be the San Mario de del Fiore. Uh, sounds good enough. Minus 20 advisor cost there is going to be working really well for us. Why? Well, because our advisor cost is going to be quite impressive already. To take the education act for minus 10 advisor cost, we're going to have minus 10 or 20 advisor cost from finishing innovative ideas. We're going to be able to take minus 15 advisor costs from the diplomatic cooperation policy, which is going to give us already like minus 45 advisor costs globally. With this, that's going to take us down to minus 45. And then we need to start getting ruler, um, well, advisors of our ruler's culture. Because cost of advisors with ruler culture is already reduced by 50% by the reform attorney general. But we can get other minus 10% from the financial miracle act, which also comes to production efficiency, which definitely isn't bad. Now here, court embassies actually becomes a good thing because diplomatic possible policies plus one is kind of a, a lifesaver because um, we can run four free dip policies uh, because <laughs> we get a base free one we can run. We get an extra free one from the Swiss. We get a free one from the government reform um, over here, uh, right near the end, the extended suffrage. And of course, we get a free policy from Innovative. So be able to run four free policies and three free mill policies all the time. So this peak democratic country can just be literally full on policies for free the whole time. And again, you have max Republican tradition. So you're getting two unrest and loads of free for progress growth for free on top of everything as well. Bear in mind, you have estates still. So if you get rid of all the crown land and you get 100 crown land, you get 100 government reform progress as well. So you're going to be able to press the expand administration button a lot. In essence, it's a quite strong build and country, to be honest, and definitely a unique way of playing this game, being a super de dedicated democracy starting in Bologna. And honestly, it's quite doable. There's only one quote-unquote necessary culture switch into Swiss, and if you consider that too difficult, you can just sit here and do this as a free city. You will lose out on one free policy from not being autonomous Swiss cantons, and you will be probably quite bored because you'll be sitting on a, on a free city for the entire game, which you'll also need to make sure the HRE doesn't get dismantled, but, you know, there's that. And you can maintain constant re-elections with minimal investment in Republican tradition. And basically have a really powerful country in the way of it. Democracies are quite strong in EU4, and I hope I inspired you to start a campaign. With all that said and done, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.